Hi, I'm Mary Logsdon, and here I am at your library. Today at your library, I'm going to spend a few minutes telling you about some of the lovely spaces we have available for you to use as an individual or as a member of a community group. Stick around, please. As I said, today at your library, I wanted to spend a few minutes highlighting some of the wonderful spaces that we have here available for you to use um, for any kind of a meeting or a community um, gathering that you're planning. Often at your library, I do like to talk about our collections and our programs and our services, um, and I will certainly get back to that next month. But this month, I thought it would be a really good time to remind everyone that in our renovated and expanded space, we have quite a bit more room for you to come and use if you are in need of a meeting room space. I'm standing here in the gallery, which is our um, north, east area of the um, library. Basically, I'm in the historic section. I'm standing in front of the Rotary Room, which of course originally was part of the Carnegie Library back in 1904. And on either side of the Rotary Room, we have the PEO Room and the Danfoss Room. These three rooms that are on the east side of the building accommodate all kinds of really wonderful uses. If you have a group that needs to meet in order to um, go over some planning, or if you're doing a presentation, um, if you have a study group that wants to meet at the library, um, these are rooms that would work really, really well for you. Right across the hall over there on the other side of the gallery, we have the Dale Ross boardroom. What's really special about the boardroom is it has a wonderful boardroom table with 14 chairs around it that are permanently set up. And what I especially love about the boardroom is that while you're meeting there in that space, which is on this historic part of the library, you're looking across at the new library, the expanse of the second floor ex expansion, um, which is actually the adult services collection and um, computers uh, and basically where um, my uh, work group does all of their work here at the library in the adult services area. In addition to the meeting spaces that are up here on the second floor, I hope that you've seen our Farwell T. Brown Auditorium on the first floor. The Farwell T. Brown Auditorium has also been expanded since we renovated the library. It's now right on Douglas Avenue, so I can tell you that when you're in the auditorium, you just have a wonderful feeling of being right downtown. You see people coming and going, Sci-Ride dropping off individuals in front of the library. So it's really just a, it's a lovely space, and it's really um, a good place to um, have a gathering um, where you can be really connected to your neighbors right here at the library. So if you're interested in using a meeting room, our meeting room booking software is linked on our website. So go to amespubliclibrary.org and you're going to click on using the library. We have a good bit of information there about how to establish an account in order to reserve a meeting room space. We also have details about the policies regarding the use of the meeting room space. The meeting rooms have to be used for um, non-commercial purposes um, and not for private parties or celebrations. Um, so you can just read through the guidelines and see if the meeting room policy relates to your use. Um, and as I said, there is a bit of software. If you need any um, assistance in navigating the website, of course, give us a call here at the library or shoot us an email at Ask a Librarian, and we'd be happy to help you to interpret how to get started. Now, if you, I mentioned study groups. If you have just a small study group um, or if you have a tutoring session with somebody that you want to be able to work with um, in a quieter space in the library, we actually do also have study rooms. Study rooms are available on a first-come, first-served basis. 
We have five study rooms on the first floor, and you would um, ask about their availability at the youth services desk on the first floor. They are not, though, reserved for um, use only by youth. Um, the study rooms are available on the first floor and the second floor for all of our customers. And there are three study rooms on the second floor and stop by the adult services desk to ask about their availability. Study rooms um, are available uh, for individuals for two hours and um, we just ask folks to share because this is a limited resource. Um, and depending on the demand, you may or may not be able to stay beyond two hours, but we do guarantee that everyone who requests a study room will have it for a minimum of two hours. I'm really delighted to be able to report that since we opened in 2014 in the expanded space, we have really seen heavy use of our meeting rooms as well as our study rooms. And it's really gratifying because we knew when we planned that we not only wanted more room in the library for growing collections, for more technology, we also wanted more room for the growing demand for um, lovely and um, technologically um, modern meeting room spaces. I did mention technology, so I want you to know that all of the study rooms are equipped with uh, monitors that, um, to which you can plug in a laptop so that if you wanted to project um, a presentation, if you wanted to just be looking at something online, in our meeting rooms, we really do have very modern technology that works seamlessly um, with your equipment uh, so that you can uh, project what it is you're working on. We ask that you stop at the welcome desk to check in for your meeting room when you come to the library. And if you need to have some cables, for example, an HDMI cable or um, a um, remote projector uh, advancer, <laughs> Uh, we do have those kinds of pieces of equipment to check out to you for use in your particular meeting room. So if you have questions about any of what I've told you today, as I said, please stop by the Adult Services Desk and ask. Come to our website and just read a little bit more about the meeting room policy and uses or send us an email. We're really happy to help you to more fully use this library. Now I'm just going to share with you a few of the recent additions to the library's collection. This episode of At Your Library is being filmed in October, and October is jam-packed with uh, lots of activities at the library. Uh, I want to mention a couple of them that are occurring at the end of the month, and I sure hope that you will take this opportunity to come to the library. Um, we are going to have a book discussion facilitated by uh, our librarians on Margaret Atwood's The Handmaid's Tale. And that is going to be on October 25th, right here in the Rotary Room behind me um, at 7 p.m. This discussion of A Handmaid's Tale is something that I hope will um, just generate um, enthusiasm 
for going to see Margaret Atwood, who is going to be at the Memorial Union at Iowa State University on November 1st at 8 p.m. The library is really happy to be, to be able to share um, information about the um, presence of Margaret Atwood here in Ames. Um, the Ames Public Library Friends Foundation um, has partnered with the University Library, the Committee on Lectures funded by student government, the MFA program in Creative Writing and Environment, World Affairs, Carrie Chapman Cat Center for Women in Politics, Margaret Sloss Women's Center, National Affairs, Society for the Advancement of Gender Equity, Women and Gender Studies, and the Office of Sustain Sustainability and the Green Umbrella, all of those at Iowa State University. We're just really happy to be able to uh, let the community get um, ready to see the lecture by Margaret Atwood by coming to Ames Public Library and having a discussion of A Handmaid's Tale, again on October 25th at 7 p.m. in the Rotary Room. And then on the, also that same week, we are having here at the Ames Public Library one of the most prolific narrators of audiobooks. If you are like many people and you enjoy listening to audiobooks, um, either when you're commuting back and forth to work, or if you're on a road trip and you are really interested in listening to a story rather than flipping around for a radio channel, you've probably heard George Guidal. He's probably narrated some of your favorite books that you've listened to when you've um, enjoyed uh, listening to audiobooks that you've checked out from the Ames Public Library. Well, George Guidal is going to be here on October 26th, Wednesday, and he is going to be speaking about the art and artifice of audiobook, audiobook narration. Um, he will be giving a presentation here at the library, both at two o'clock in the afternoon, so if that suits your schedule, please come, and then he will return at 7 p.m. So he is really a gifted actor, performer, um, uh, speaker, uh, who will certainly delight you in person, as I'm sure he has um, in the privacy of your um, car or wherever else you happen to listen to audiobooks. So please join us for a book discussion on October uh, 25th in the evening or come and or come to the presentation on the art and artifice of audiobook narration on October 26th. There are a lot of details, all of which are here in our issue of page one, and I hope that you will pick it up next time you come to the library or check out all of the details of what's happening at the library on our website, on our Facebook page. Ask us, we're delighted to tell you more about what's happening at your library. Thanks again so much for listening. This is Mary Logston at your library.